Hugely important video for you guys today. These two coins in front of you kind of are a little bit of symbolism for what we have coming up. Since I started this channel, I have advocated my viewers to stack precious metals like gold and silver. Take your money out of the bank and be your own bank. But how do you do this safely and how do you protect your precious metals? Hey everyone, welcome to Campbell's Coins. In this episode, I'm going to go over ways you can secure and protect your precious metals, tips you can use, and as always, so much more. Coming up. All of what I'm gonna talk about relies heavily on your personal comfort level. Precious metals are heavy and they take up space, especially in the case of silver. $50,000 in gold fits in the palm of your hand and weighs about 2.6 pounds. The same value in silver is a little more than three monster boxes of American Silver Eagles and weighs close to 150 pounds. A single monster box the dimensions are 15 inches by eight and a half inches by four and a half inches. So there is a space and weight issue when it comes to storing silver. The two biggest risks to storing precious metals are theft and natural disasters. If you store your metals at home and you have to evacuate, could you bring your metals with you? I'm sure a few people who had to evacuate due to the fires in California or the hurricanes in the South we're in this predicament. Times are becoming more and more uncertain. We are seeing this in the markets and the prices of metals and in the strife in our country. Homes and businesses are being robbed and looted and people are demanding that the police who defend us from criminals are defunded. With all this uncertainty, how are you supposed to secure your stack? There are a lot of questions you should ask yourself prior to determining where to store your precious metals. Do other people know you stack precious metals? Maybe your kids do and they innocently tell others. Is your income high enough to make you a target? Do you work in the public eye? Have you talked positively about gold and silver, including on social media? Do you have an alarm system? Alarms won't prevent thefts, but they will alert the police. Are your hiding spots clever enough? Think like a thief. If you pick a safe, is it fireproof? What level of protection could it offer against natural disasters? Is your safe small enough that a thief could walk away with it? Is it secured to the floor in some way? How would you respond if a thief found it and demanded that you open it? Do you have decoy bullion hidden somewhere? Is your bullion hidden too well? Maybe you can't find it or your heirs have trouble finding it. Ensuring your home stored bullion is very costly and most home insurance policies don't cover the full value if silver rises in price. Ensuring your precious metals also breaks the golden rule of telling too many people what you have. I think people's first instinct is to put their precious metals in a bank. They view banks as a vault. It's safe, so anything I put in there must be safe and protected, right? Yes and no. Banks can be safe and they offer top level security both internally and externally. However, I don't view this option as a good idea. You'll pay annual storage fees for a safety deposit box and there is no safety deposit box big enough that will hold a monster box of American Silver Eagles, so keep that in mind. Charges for a safety deposit box range from $200 to $500 annually. There is no insurance against robbery or disaster. Think of the customers whose safe deposit boxes were washed away by the tsunami in Japan, or the fires ravaging California, or the peaceful protesters in so many of our cities. Additionally, you can only access your precious metals during business hours, and you're at the whim of the bank's rules and regulations. What happens if you need to access your stack and you're unable to because the bank is closed, either because it is after hours or simply because of an unscheduled quote-unquote bank holiday? During financial crises in the U.S., 
Banks have shut down unannounced because they are trying to limit runs on the bank system. They call these bank holidays. Your stack is only as secure as that bank's security can be. Bank employees won't fight if there's a robbery and the possibility of theft of your items is definitely there. If the government decides to ban the ownership of gold again, like they did in 1933, it makes it really easy for this gold to be turned over because you're storing it in a centralized place, not within your control. An aggressive attorney will thank you for providing them the generous clue of where some of your assets are stored. I would not recommend storing your precious metals in a bank. What does this leave you for storage and protection of your precious metals? That's a good question. You can store them at a precious metals depository. You can hide them in a location that no one will find them. You can store your precious metals at home. All of these have their own problems and issues and you have to decide what's best for you. Let's start off with a precious metals depository. If you're worried about protecting your own precious metals, this might be the best option for you. These facilities are armed and well protected with constant surveillance. These facilities are climate and moisture controlled and offer protection against environmental conditions. Your metals are also insured at these facilities. You'll pay an annual storage fee based on the size of your stack. There are communal and segregated storage options. Like a bank, there's also accessibility issues. There is not a precious metal depository in every city across the nation. Additionally, some will allow access 24 seven, but others will not. If you're far from a storage facility, they will ship you your precious metals to you on demand, but there is a slight shipping delay. These metals are often shipped to you in an armored car, not by mail. For that reason, if you choose to go with a private secure facility, I would recommend a facility close to your home. If you need your stack now and it's far from your home, you may have issues reaching it. So if you pick this option, you really have to check to see if the benefits outweigh the downsides of keeping your stack in a different location. Midnight gardening. The term midnight gardening is used for those who choose to bury the precious metals under the cover of night so their digging isn't noticed during the day. Here are some tips if you choose to bury your precious metals. I've heavily invested in gold, which I've buried in several different locations around Pawnee. Or have I? Use a container that is airtight, waterproof, and won't rust. Consider how easy or difficult it will be to find. Too easy, and someone, or a thief, may stumble upon it. Too difficult, and your heirs may have a hard time locating it. Find a place on a property you own that you will always remember but isn't obvious. You could draw a map for others to find it, but keep in mind that it might be too difficult. Splitting the map into multiple pieces and giving them to different individuals ensures that it won't be easily found, but if someone loses a piece of that map, your precious metals may be lost forever. If you decide to bury, also keep in mind that metal detectors can detect up to four feet in depth. A good idea is storing your precious metals in a safe underneath a shed. This method allows you to grab your metals without being seen. Indoor storage, typically I'm talking about in your home, is practical for small quantities. You can probably think of a ton of places where no one would think to look. The goal is to hide it in such a way that it isn't complicated for you or your heirs to find but it is very complicated for a thief to find. Here are some hiding tips to get the creative thoughts flowing. Nothing obvious like hollow rocks or a carved out book. If you're getting your hiding spot from a movie, find a better one. Make sure you find a spot a plumber, electrician, gardener, or maid won't stumble across. Three layers deep is a good rule of thumb. Most burglars look for easy access items to grab and go. A good approach is to store your items three layers deep. An example of this would be a floor safe covered by floorboards, which are then covered by a rug with a cabinet on top. Safes are much more secure than leaving them behind some books, but no safe is 100% secure. 
Safes buy you time, nothing more. If you have a key to the safe, hide that key separately from the safe. Robbers could threaten someone in your house making you give up the key or combo to your safe. The weight of the safe is a big deal. A 100 pound safe can be hauled off by one or two people using a dolly or simply by picking it up. A three to 400 pound safe removes the risk of it being stolen by a single person, but not by multiple people. 500 pounds and up means you're doing okay, unless there is a group of robbers, a heavy vehicle, and equipment to take the safe out. Remember, thieves can use the items in your home to bust into or drag your safe away. The contents of the safe also increases the weight of the safe, especially if you're stacking silver. If you're purchasing a heavier safe, this means tipping your hand to the installation company that you've got valuables in the house. Safes made with 12 gauge steel should be the starting point with 10 and eight gauge steel being ideal. A good safe with a high fire rating will cost you anywhere between $2,500 and $5,000. So it could be a big hit to your pocketbook. Typically, the more expensive safes are also much heavier and will require four or more people to help you install in your home. Here are some type of safes that you might find useful. If you decide to store in your home, there are a few other things you should definitely consider other than a safe. A security system for starters, one that offers both video recording and monitoring. Some offer just alarms, but good ones will give you both options. Wireless cameras are fairly cheap, can be accessed on the internet, and come in a variety of concealable options. If a security system is too pricey, a good guard dog is a great idea. Dogs are very protective of their surroundings and will alert you to intruders. I'm a heavy sleeper, and a few years ago, my house was broken into at 2 a.m. I woke up startled to my dog guarding my bedroom door, staring at my back door as someone busted in. She gave her I'll kill you bark, something I've come to call her danger bark. It rustled me up from my deep sleep and gave me the opportunity to grab my gun and go after the intruder. This introduces me to another item you should consider, a firearm. Firearms are a good way to defend yourself, but there are some drawbacks. Make sure you're following your state and local laws for starters. I highly recommend a first time gun owner get some training for how to use your gun and to learn about the different situations in which you should or should not use a firearm. With a firearm comes the option of firearm insurance. This is also known as carry insurance. Carry insurance is good because if you use a firearm to defend yourself, you will need legal help regardless of if the issue situation was justified. Carry insurance ranges in price, but decent coverage is about 30 bucks a month. Consider decoys, keeping maybe two safes in the house, one which is cheap and contains just a few items so that if a thief breaks in, they think that they're getting your whole entire stash and the real safe that is in a different part of the house and it is well hidden that contains the bulk of your stack. Diversify is a fantastic option. Diversify your hiding spots. Use more than one hiding spot, but not so many that you forget where they all are. I truly feel that this is one of the best ways in securing your stack. Don't store your eggs in one basket. You've heard this phrase probably your whole life. You should space out your stack. The barterable items like constitutional silver should be very easy to get to and near your house. Your collectible items should be in a location no one could find. You'll want to pull out the collectible items after the dust settles, but you don't need them right away when whatever is going down goes down. In the meantime, you have constitutional silver for barter. Remember, when there is unrest, the mob targets those they perceive to have something. The mob attacks blindly, no rationale or logical thought to those individuals. You don't want to be a target. Having a few beat up silver coins is easy to explain away. Having gold and other numismatic coins will target you for theft, if not worse. 
One of the best ways to secure your stack is to not tell anyone about it. I know that sounds ironic since I'm here talking and showing off precious metals, but I do it for you. The people. Maybe you tell one person that you trust, but they let it slip to a friend, and that friend tells an unsavory character. And that person figures out where you live and decides to rob you. This is why it's important to not tell anyone about your stack. Again, I know it's counterintuitive since I'm doing that. I'm always looking for new investments. Ever since I got my first job at the age of nine, I have put all my money into gold, which is currently at an all-time high. So I have a certain amount of money. I've said too much. But I would like you guys to know, my audience, you really don't have any ideas about me or what I have or don't have. You don't know if I'm borrowing the metals that you see just for these videos. You don't know how many homes or places my stack is or is not hidden. You don't know if these items are here one day in a video and sold off in my store in the next. You only see what I want you to see. As with most of my videos, ultimately it is up to you to decide what is right for you. Your risk grows as you accumulate more metal. You do not want to be wiped out due to an oversight. If you think you have a fairly large stack, especially in silver, it might be best to find a precious metals depository to store your stack. For all the reasons I gave before. This video also points out another nod to gold and that it is compact yet lets you store tremendous wealth. Since gold is so small, one can easily hide a few handfuls, no problem, but those handfuls hold a great deal of wealth. I'm not saying that gold is the only way, but it doesn't have the huge space and weight issue that silver has unless you have a multi-million dollar stack of gold, in which case, uh, the private storage facility might be a better option for you. What do you think of this video? I spend a lot of time trying to hammer out all the fine points so that you have a complete picture of all your options. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Campbell's Coins and that is my two cents.